Do you want to know my number one productivity cheat code hack ninja move as the great Dan Lazonis would call it? It's called the line. Two words, the line. And I'll tell you all about how the line, my number one productivity secret changed and transformed my personal and my professional life almost instantly. Michael McLean, brassballsvideos.com. I'm an ex-professional hockey coach turned eight figure entrepreneur. I have a special surprise gift for you at brassballsvideos.com. There's nothing to buy. When you opt in and join my email newsletter list, I have a private training from my $30,000 Champions Mastermind. It's called Magnetic Speaking. And it's the 11 ways you can almost instantly become a magnetic speaker, influencer, communicator, and leader. And this training has never seen the light of day. It was a private training I did with my $30,000 Mastermind members last year. Yours free if you join my email newsletter list, brassballsvideo.com. I'll keep it up for a couple more days and then I'll pull it down for good. So the line. I was mentored in minor pro hockey and junior hockey on my rise early after I graduated from university by the great Wayne Maxner. And Wayne Maxner, if you don't know anything about hockey, Wayne was the former head coach of the Detroit Red Wings. I think he was a head coach in the NHL at 34 years of old. old. He was a Hall of Fame junior coach. One of the most influential men in my life next to my, my dad and my grandfather. And Wayne, he was old school. He was a hard ass, he was smart, he was a survivor, he was a, a, a strategic wizard. And I'll never forget working for Wayne Maxner my first year in minor pro, I was the assistant coach. And I was in the film room breaking down practice and game tape. He'd have me break down every shift, every player, every penalty, every second and I'd have to grade I'd have to grade each player, practices and games. So it was nothing for me to sit in the film room. And this is going back 25 years. We would have, you know, three or four televisions. The room was basically dark and I'm just in there cutting tape all day long. And the only time I wasn't in there is when I was running practice or out on the ice or in the weight room. And one day I wa Maxner walks in and I'm in there and uh, on the two, on, there's like three TV screens on my desk and two are on game film and practice film. And on the other one, I've got ESPN or the NHL network, something up, up, you know, to entertain myself as well. Today it would be social media or, or uh, something along those lines, some distraction. And Wayne walks in, he sees that I have two of the monitors on the job at hand and then I have one where I'm basically entertaining myself with sports pro sports news and he looks at me and he said you don't know about the line and I said well what's the line he said I've used the line for 30 years in pro hockey in my personal life to get more done than 99% of other pro coaches Basically, he's saying, how do you think I've won so much? How do you think I'm on my way to the Hall of Fame in junior hockey? How do you think I coached in the NHL when I was 34? I did it by the discipline of the line. So I said to Maxner, I said, so what's the line? And he said, well, the line is the exact polar opposite of what you're doing right now. He said, whenever I do a task, I do one thing at a time. Wayne Maxner said, only chumps multitask. He always used to see me doing two and three things at a time as an assistant coach. And he'd say, doing a lot of things over there, Michael. 
none of them well. Whenever he saw me multitasking, he would stop me and he would say, doing a whole bunch of things at the same time, none of them well. So in this case, he was so against multitasking. And in this case, I'm sitting there cutting game film and practice film, chopping it up and grading it. And he sees that I'm doing something else too. I'm watching, I'm online with, you know, checking the NHL scores and the NFL scores and everything else. And he said, here's what the line means. Whatever the one thing I'm doing, he says, whatever I'm doing, I'm only ever doing one thing at a time. Whether it's out walking in the morning in fresh air and the sunshine and the wind and the rain, whether I'm, uh, you know, cutting film, breaking down game tape, whether I'm running a practice, whether I'm in the weight room, whether I'm working on with corporate clients for the hockey team, I'm working with season ticket holders, I'm having, I'm having dinner with my wife Kathleen, or I'm on the phone with my children. Whatever I'm doing, the one thing I'm doing, first of all, it's always one thing. But to protect that one thing, I use the discipline of what I call the line. So if I'm walking into the gym, he used this as an example, and I go to the gym at six in the morning now, I walk five minutes next door, and Max said, when I'm walking into the gym at the rink, he says, I visualize in my mind, I see it in my head, that as soon as I open up the weight room or the gym door, there's a yellow line that goes across. And I visualize this every time. And I've trained myself, Maxner said, I've trained myself to understand that crossing back over that line is non-negotiable until I have completed the task I came there to do. So if he went into the gym to walk on the tre treadmill for 30 minutes and, you know, do some upper body weight training or some Hindu squats or some push-ups or some bench, whatever it was, as soon as he opened the gym door, in his mind, he would visualize that yellow line that cannot, cannot be crossed. In other words, he can't step back over until the work is done. He can't worry about his cell phone. He can't worry about what else is happening with the hockey team. He's not taking phone calls from his kids. He's not trying to watch game film when he's on the bench press, on the tread, none of it. He's doing one thing until it's completed. And then and only then is does he allow himself to cross over the line. So he asked me, he said, Michael, how many lines could there be in a person's life? And I said, I thought about it. I said, well, there could be lines for everything, personal, perfect. He goes, exactly. Doing one thing well and using the visualized line to keep yourself focused. There's nothing more important than focus. Focus is the number one skill of ultra successful uh, peak performance, high performance people and athletes. It's the number one common denominator is focus. If you don't have focus, you have no chance to win. So he said, when I cross that line into the gym, I'm the most focused person in that gym. I am not talking to other people in the gym. I'm not looking at my phone. I'm not listening to music. I'm not checking my email. I'm in there to do one thing and one thing only. And I focus on only that until I'm done. And only then can I open the door and cross the line. He says, you know, I do the same thing when I have my dinner at home with my wife, Kathleen. She doesn't see me since five o'clock in the morning. She doesn't see me the, I get up so early. She hasn't seen me since the night before. But when I sit down every night, if we don't have a game at 6 p.m. with my, 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 my wife, Kathleen, he says, I visualize a line at the front door. As soon as I walk in from the rink, I've been away for 10, 12, 14 hours. He says, I have that line concept at the front door. 
and he goes, as soon as I walk through my front door at home, I visualize a mental line across and I put my cell phone down, I turn it off, I put my car keys away and I literally, literally am all in with my wife for that evening, including dinner, including after dinner. He goes, I've given 14 hours to the team. I'm not giving a second more. I don't care. He says, I'm not crossing that line until the next morning. Same thing, getting ready for bed. He would say, you know, I put that line across in my mind that one hour before bed, no TV, no news, no cell phone, no email, no technology. One hour before bed, it's just family time, getting ready for bed, talking to my wife, prayer, go to sleep. So he even used the line to discipline himself to do one thing before bed. And this way he says, you know, you've got both feet in today all the time. He says, you always want to know, be where your feet are. Like Nick Saban said, be where your feet are. Well, most people aren't where their feet are. Most people are scattered all over the place. You can use this line to focus on one thing, to stop the multitasking, to stop the dopamine rushes, and do one thing to completion. And you just chop up your day like that, he said, using that line. And by the end of the day, he says, you've got the three, four, five things, the important, not the urgent, done. And he said, you could use that line in the video room. You, you leave your phone outside, you go in there for two hours and you do video and you get the job done and you do nothing but video. You don't allow yourself to cross back over that line until the two hours of time video is over. The same thing with everything in your life. Coming home, there should be a line at the front door. And that's the problem with today's world in 2024 is we don't have the standards and we don't have boundaries. You know, the ultimate tool for boundaries in my life has been the line, has been this, this, this peak productivity line. I sleep from 10 p.m. till 6 a.m. That's the line. I don't stay up past 10 and if I do, I still get up the next day at 5.59. I'll have a rest in the afternoon. But I don't take on things that keep me up late. I have all these lines in the different areas of my life, visualized lines, and I rarely, if ever, cross them. Now, the thing is with these lines, when you cross the line to do a job, you do the job and you don't cross back out until it's done. And I have lines in my life. My, my line is some days I'm, I get up in the morning and I don't want to walk. So my rule is five minutes. I'm going to put on my only goals to put on my rucking vest and to open up the front door and head out. But in my mind, and I didn't want to walk the other morning in the dark, I put a line, a yellow line across the front door when I opened it. And I said to myself, I'm not going to allow myself to cross that line I was visualizing until I've put in 10,000 steps. And I remember out walking after five minutes, I felt a little better. After 10, I felt pretty good. After 20 minutes, I felt awesome. And I remember coming back into the driveway and I walked up to the door and I'd put in my 10,000 steps and I had voted for myself and I had kept my promise to myself and I didn't negotiate. I didn't negotiate against myself. And I remember crossing that line back into the house. And there's Emery getting ready for school and, and Krista making breakfast, my two favorite and most important people. And it just was, it was stacking the wins when I crossed that line. That was another stacking the win for me. And I felt fantastic. Same thing when I go to the gym now, I open up that door in the darkness and there's such an urge some days to just close it, you know, and I'll go later or whatever. And now I just visualize that yellow caution line and as soon as I open the door I put that line behind me in my mind and I don't cross back until I leave 45 minutes later. It's such a simple and powerful concept 
if you're struggling with any discipline or any inspiration or motivation, use the line to enter, use the line to exit. And it's such a powerful, powerful thing. You're with your kids, you wanna be connected, you lock that cell phone away and you put lines, you say you put that behind a line and you say, okay, I'm not touching that phone for the next two hours until I've invested time with my queen or, you know, I go to a date night, I, I leave my phone at home. That's a line, that's a line. Um, same thing with any of these things, it's a line. And it's such a great discipline, it's such a great productivity tool and it's just a great way to get started. And it's another great way to exit and stack those wins. Remember the line, the line. It's the boundaries in your life. You can set these lines up anywhere you go. I'm not gonna stop until I walk to that line. I'm not gonna cross that line at home until I put in 10,000 steps. I'm not going to, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna leave my home office until I've written four pages of copy this morning. The line I set when I walked into my home office. Um, I'm not going to, I'm gonna read 10 pages today and I'm not gonna check my phone, I'm not gonna check social media, I'm not gonna touch my computer. I put a line, I walked over the line and until I've read 10 pages of a real book this morning, I'm not gonna allow myself to cross back over that line. Use it, use it. It's a powerful, powerful concept of peak performance and high performance people. Getting things done with visualizing boundaries the line that's it if you want that training it'll be up for probably another 20 or 24 hours magnetic speaking just join my email list at brassballsvideos.com it's free there's nothing to buy it's a 22 23 minute training that's never seen the light of day one of the most powerful trainings my my champion said we did all last year and these are guys paying $30,000 to be in that room. Yours free, brassballsvideos.com. That's it, the line, serious boundaries, doing one thing at a time, saying no to multitasking, saying no to voting against yourself, saying no to negotiating the process, and the line will keep both feet in today. It'll help you be where your feet are at, the only thing you have to be is a high integrity person. When you set the line, that line, it's not in chalk, it's in cement. High integrity, high intensity, and when it's done, that's just stacking the wins and building your confidence and your integrity. The secret of the line, thanks to Wayne, the late, great Wayne Maxner for that game changer for me. Two words that changed my life, two words that'll change yours. Be relentless.